Okay, this is F. It has three line segments. G is the function that is the integral from negative 3 to x of the graph that we're looking at. So when you read that, you should be thinking that g is the area under the curve between negative 3 and whatever x value they're asking me about of the, the picture that I'm looking at. Okay, so on a, when they ask me to find g of 3, okay, g of 3 is equal to, um, and it never hurts to just write it, the integral from negative 3 to 3 of f of t dt. Uh, now, I was lenient on this on the quiz last week. Um, if you left your dt off, okay, I did not count off. I don't know how picky they're going to be about that, but please, please, please be in the habit of making sure that you put that on there, okay? Um, so, this is the area under the curve from negative 3 to positive 3. We can split that into uh, three different sections, or well, really two. Okay, you've got a big triangle right here. You've got one half times the width is one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five units. The height is, and I just colored over it, uh, four units. Plus, uh, then we've got an area that is under the curve. Uh, so negative one-half times a width of one times a height of two. So again, uh, being efficient, multiply the one-half times the four to get two. So that's ten minus one. So g of three is equal to nine. You get one point for the answer. B, on what open intervals contained between negative 5 and 4 is the graph of G both increasing and concave down? Give a reason for your answer. Okay, so to know whether a function is increasing, what do we look at? Huh? First derivative, yes. Okay, we're looking for the first derivative to be what? positive. If the original is increasing, the derivative is positive. If the original is concave down, what is true about the first derivative? Decreasing. Okay. So we're not looking at g prime, or are we? If g is the integral of f g prime is f, right? So we are looking for where, where this graph f, we're looking for where this graph is positive and decreasing. From negative 5 to negative 3, and from 0 to 2. And the reason that they give, and you should usually, questions like this, you should write in words. You can see exactly how they have it phrased on the back of the page. They say the graph of G is increasing and concave down on the intervals from negative 5 to 3 and 0 to 2 because g prime equals f is positive and decreasing on these intervals. That's all you need. So you get one point for the answer. Even if you can't justify it, you still get that one point, and then you get one point for your justification. Okay? All right. You good with that? Y'all got to know those relationships between the functions and the function and its derivatives. Okay, let's look at C. 
C says the function h is defined by g of x divided by 5x. Find h prime of 3. Oh, check it out. Here's where we have to remember how to do the quotient rule and stuff like that um, with, with functions mixed in there. So h prime of x is, you got to use the quotient rule because you got a variable in the top and in the bottom, low d high minus high d low all over low squared. And according to this, you get two points for h prime of x. So probably they would award you one point for this. So even if you don't know where to go after here, you probably get one point for this part right here. Um, and then they're going to give you one point for being able to plug in some specifics. And then you get a point for your answer. So let's keep going. Let's plug in the specifics. Because that's just h prime of x. We want h prime of 3. So let's plug in 3 everywhere we see x. Wait, what? Thursday, May 5th. It's like 45 days away, I think. Okay, so 5 times 3 is 15. G prime of 3. G prime of 3. Well, we just established that G prime is equal to F. So what is F of 3? Negative 2. Minus G of 3. Well, we're not looking at G. But, uh, guess what? We computed that in part A. It was 9. G of 3 was 9. Here's a case where, say, you don't know how to find the answer for part A, but you're working on part C and you need G of 3. Well, stick something reasonable up there in part A and then use it in part C. Okay, now do I think that you'd be able to do part C if you can do part A? I don't really know about that, but, you know, who knows? Okay, um, over 15 squared. Now, once again, let's talk about simplifying because this is calculator inactive. Now, no, you cannot cancel that 15 in the very front with one of the 15s in the bottom. But if all three of these terms, okay, this term, this term, and this term have 15, then you can, okay? So can we rewrite 9 times 5 as 15 times something? How about 15 times 3? So we can cancel a 15 there, a 15 there, and one of the 15s in the bottom. So we've got negative 2 minus 3 over 15 that's negative uh, 5 over 15, which is negative 1 third. Now, wasn't that better than having to square 15 without a calculator? And then try and simplify those numbers. I think so. Okay, so you get one point for that answer. Two points for the derivative, one point for the answer. So, I mean, we're doing pretty good, right? That's already six points. Six out of nine points. Let's look at part D. All right, D says the function P is defined as F of X squared minus X. Find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of P at the point where X equals negative 1. So when you read slope of the tangent line, what do you think? Derivative. So we need to take the derivative of p, p prime of x. Well, p is defined as another function. Here's a chain rule, okay? So we've got to do f prime of x squared minus x times the derivative of the inside, 2x minus 1. Are we okay with that? All right, so p prime of x is f prime of 
we want to know where x equals negative 1. So negative 1 squared is uh, positive 1. Positive 1 minus a negative 1 is 2. So we're going to have to find f prime of 2. And 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So where are we going to get f prime of 2? Allie, I think you said that a minute ago as an answer for another part. Mm -hmm. It's the slope, okay? F prime is going to be the slope of F. F, or F is just lines, right? So its derivative is going to be a constant. That constant is its slope. So what is the slope of the line at, neg uh, at positive 2? Yes, it is negative 2. Okay, the rise over the run is you do go down 2 and run 1. So the slope is negative 2. So negative 2 times negative 3. According to this, P prime of, and I should have put a negative 1 right here, P prime of negative 1 is 6. Hmm? Do you have to show your work? No. Mm -mm. No, because they give you two points for the derivative of p. So if all you can do is uh, take the derivative, that first line, and then plug in negative 1, I think those are probably the two points. And then you get one point for the answer of actual positive 6. So I don't know about you, but I feel like this is a problem where y'all should get most, of the, most, if not all, the points. Okay. Um, these, in my opinion, are, are pretty, I don't want to say simple, but they're, they're straightforward. Um, they're straightforward. Um, and I just did that and explained it in 12 minutes. Okay, I just did that and explained it in 12 minutes. So um, this could be a problem that you could save some time on as well. All right.